The lumbosacral plexus consists of two parts, the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. We'll divide the two and look at the major nerves in each before we draw this out into a large chart that'd be easy for you to study. So first we'll start with the lumbar plexus. The major nerves of the lumbar plexus consists of the following, iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal, genitofemoral, lateral cutaneous, obturator nerve, and the femoral nerve. So in this order, there's a fun mnemonic device that you can use to remember it that it goes like this. I twice get laid on Fridays. So now we'll go over the sacral plexus major nerves and continue this mnemonic. The main nerves of the sacral plexus include superior gluteal nerve, inferior gluteal nerve, posterior cutaneous nerve, then we have the sciatic nerve, which then divides into two branches, the common peroneal, also known as common fibular nerve, and the tibial nerve. And then finally, the pudendal nerve. If we continue your mnemonic of I twice get laid on Fridays, to remember the sacral portion, you can say I twice get laid on Fridays since I pay sexy prostitutes. If you want to remember common peroneal and tibial, you can add to the mnemonic by saying common townspeople or curvy titty prostitutes. So we'll write down both. So there you have it. The main nerves of the lumbar plexus, the main nerves of the sacral plexus, and together a fun mnemonic to help you remember the order of the nerves. So now we'll teach you how to draw this in the schematic diagram to help you remember the lumbosacral plexus. First, get out a sheet of paper and a pen or pencil, and I'll tell you how to draw it out. First, in the upper two thirds of your page, for in landscape or horizontal view, I want you to write out the root levels, L1 through L5, and then S1 through four. Now I want you to draw vertical lines down from each nerve root, like lines in a parking lot. First, I want you to draw a V connecting the first two roots, the second two roots, skip a space, and then fill them in for the rest. and skip the last space. So first we'll return to the beginning. Down from the L1 line, I want you to draw a Y. And those will be our first two major nerves of the lumbar plexus, the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal. So you have your iliohypogastric and your ilioinguinal. Next, draw a line down from that first V that you made, and this will be your genitofemoral nerve. Next, draw a line down from the second V, and this will be your lateral cutaneous nerve. Now, from the base of L2 and L4, I want you to draw them to connect to make an X at the bottom. So from L4 over cross, L2, make an X, and then connect L3 to your X. This will be your obturator nerve and femoral nerve. So if you remember your mnemonic from the lumbar plexus, I twice get laid on Friday. There you have your main portions of your lumbar plexus. Now we'll move on to the sacral portion. So for each V, count three spaces over, one, two, three, and draw a line from there to the first point of your V. 
you're going to repeat this all the way down. So again, you're going to count one, two, three, and connect it to the next V point. One, two, three, connect it here. And one more time, one, two, three, connect it here. So these are gonna be some of the major nerves of the sacral plexus. The first one is gonna be your superior gluteal nerve. The next will be your inferior gluteal nerve. Next will be your posterior cutaneous nerve. And the last one will be your pudendal nerve. Now remember, we also have the big sciatic nerve with two divisions of the common peroneal and the tibial. So what we're gonna do from L4 to S3 we're gonna connect it to make a big box. This part will be the sciatic nerve. To divide it into its branches, we're gonna draw a line down from L5, so because the common peroneal encompasses L4, L5, and S1. So we're gonna write common peroneal from this line. And then for the tibial, the tibial nerve consists of the entire sciatic nerve roots, L, roots L4 through S3. So I think of it as making a, a giant T, T for tibial. And that will be our tibial nerve. Now past the knee, the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve will divide into smaller branches. The tibial nerve will divide into medial and lateral plantar nerves. And the common peroneal will divide into superficial and deep peroneal or fibular nerves. So there you have the major branches of the lumbosacral plexus. Now that you've learned the basics, we're gonna take it a step further. The reason why I asked you to draw it in the, on this part of your paper is because we're gonna draw some more nerves on top of it. There are some smaller direct muscular branches that come off of this giant hot mess. So we're gonna go over those now. So we're gonna start by, I imagine them as little mountains or little tents. And the first one we're gonna connect L1 and 2 to make a little tent. And this is for psoas minor. The next direct muscular branch is gonna connect the first three. So we're gonna make a, a taller mountain and this will be for the quadratus lumborum. Lastly, we're gonna make an even bigger mountain that encompasses all of these, and that will be for the psoas major. So those are the direct muscular branches off of the lumbar plexus. Now for the sacral plexus, we're also gonna draw some tiny tents, our tiny mountains. So we're gonna make a tent between the first three and draw a line in the middle to support it. Starting from here, do the same thing for the next three and a line in the middle to support it. That goes L S1. And then one more time and a line in the middle to support it. For the direct muscular branches of L4, L5, and S1, this will be for the nerve to quadratus femoris. 
L5, S1, and S2 will be for the nerves to the piriformis and the nerve to the obturator internus. Next, for LS1, 2, and 3, we have the pelvic splanchnic nerves. And then finally, just stemming from S4, we have three direct muscular branches, the nerve to the levator ani, nerve to the coccygeus, and the nerve to the external anal sphincter. So there you have it for the next step in the lumbosacral plexus the direct muscular branches making small mountains and tents on top of our schematic diagram. For those of you who just can't get enough of this hot mess and want to take the lumbosacral plexus to the next level, we're going to divide this into the anterior divisions and the posterior divisions. So in pink, I will highlight the nerve roots that will be in the anterior division or coming off of the ventral rami. And in purple, we will highlight the nerves that are coming off of the dorsal rami or the posterior division. We're gonna start with the anterior. So in the lumbar plexus, the only one is the obturator nerve. For the sacral plexus, we have the quadratus femoris. the nerve to the obturator internus. We have the tibial nerve. We have the pudendal nerve. And we have half of the posterior cutaneous nerve. And we have the direct muscular branches off of S4. Now the posterior division consists of the direct muscular branch to the psoas major, the lateral cutaneous nerve. In the sacral part, we have the nerve to the piriformis, the superior gluteal nerve, inferior gluteal nerve, half of the posterior cutaneous nerve, and the common peroneal nerve. So there you have it.